test your students, not your patients. Um, so uh, what is the idea of this talk? Um, in late 2013, um, I started my PhD with uh, Carl, and um, he came to me and said, yeah, there's a new course um, on applied um, uh, empirical methods for business administration students, and um, you're going to be the teaching assistant, and um, there will be um, five take-home um, assignments and a final exam and all this for 150 students. And then I said, well, 150 students, that's quite a lot. Um, and thinking of having to grade all this uh, stuff, um, I said, yeah, okay. Um, maybe we can do better. And um, since we um, wanted to innovate this course and use Mathematica for all the um, course materials for all the interactive um, stuff, for all the data, uh, working with data, said, okay, so then it wouldn't make sense to um, do a paper and pencil exam, um, so let's um, do Mathematica-based exams and try to create this automatically. So, and th then our um, adventures of automated uh, testing and grading started. Um, so, the, the basic idea is um, the student got a Mathematica um, notebook, um, their individualized exam file, and um, within this file they were asked to um, solve problems um, using code and um, some tools we provided for them. And um, yeah, imagine there are 150 um, students in one classroom and everyone has a, a laptop open, so it's very hard to um, uh, detect cheating and um, it's very easy just to copy some uh, one line of code or some uh, numbers um, from your neighbor, and um, so our approach was we have to prevent cheating, not by um, supervising and not by um, um, what other people try, um, video record um, the students. Um, we have to prevent cheating in a way um, that it simply doesn't make sense. And our approach is um, we use randomization on the questions um, and we use individualization. So that means um, you, get, you get a question, um, but every student gets slightly different numbers in this question. So the, the, the basic idea, the, the, the concept of the question stays the same, but the solutions are different. And um, with these methods, we managed to make um, an exam um, or the probability that um, two exams are the same is um, less uh, than winning the lottery. So um, it, it doesn't make sense to uh, try to um, find a pattern of individualization or randomization um, in order to cheat. So um, yeah, and yeah, that works quite well. And um, furthermore, there are some uh, security and identification issues. I don't want to go in too much detail. Um, at the end, um, all the exams were um, like designed to be um, available for automated grading. And of course, um, we also wanted to give individual feedback. And here is um, a file um, of an actual exam uh, from, oh, that's hard to see, right? Um, let me do this. Um, Okay, so that's, that's an exam file from the first round. There are some true or false questions, but the interesting part comes here. Um, so here, we uh, students had to interpret um, graphs and tables, and all those graphs and tables were individualized. Um, and then we had some coding questions, and um, 
this is a really, um, yeah, as applied as it gets um, in an exam. So you're faced with a problem, you were asked to um, choose an approach, and then um, here do some um, coding, all the data already in, included in the, in the notebook, and um, then interpret your results. So, um, and um, so that, that was quite successful, I would say. So it takes a lot of time in, in grading. Um, it was uh, very accurate. Um, here you see the reporting. Um, is this? It's waiting. So here you had to answer your matriculation number. Uh, I'm doing this at the moment. Um, and then um, for each student, there was a individual um, feedback on the exam and on the assignments and the final grade as well. And we always um, have um, the possibility that the students can compare um, to their peers. Oh, okay, so this disappeared now. Um, <coughs> there's one big problem with this. Um, first, um, you have to deal with a lot of files. So you have to distribute the files to the students and you have to make sure that you get some files back that are um, easily, um, can be easily um, read. And um, also, um, yeah, the more um, dynamic and scheduled test and um, initialization you build in a Mathematica file, the more likely it is that it crashes on, on some students' machines. When you're in a classroom with 150 students, then it's very likely that you end up with 100 combinations of uh, operating systems and hardware, and you never know what, what happens. And so we had some crashes, um, only a few, but um, yeah, so what we are doing now, um, we are still using um, the Mathematica um, files, um, but now we kind of uh, outsourced the, the, the coding. So here you see an um, uh, assignment from this year and then you click on the button and then you get the data set in a, in a separate notebook. You can do the calculations there and then here select some answers and here write some, some um, text um, answers. But um, so this, this makes the files much more robust. Um, yeah, and the reporting, um, there's, there's an, um, an issue with um, um, data security, so we cannot give out uh, files that contain all the, the information for all the students, even though we can kind of hide them, that they have to uh, enter their matriculation numbers, but when they are clever enough, they can read out the, the, the source code of the notebook, and then they would find all the um, results from all the students. So what we are doing now is um, we generate PDF reports and um, we are um, individualizing them a little bit. Um, then we also have this uh, comparison, um, detailed feedback and overall comparison. Um, so yeah, that works, but again, there's a lot of files, a lot of emails um, we are using. So, um, yeah, we, we already see huge improvements of efficiency and uh, accuracy, um, but there is potential to, to make it better and to go one step further. And um, this is what we are doing now. Um, we want to take all this to, to the cloud. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Carlos. Uh, when I took a, when I started working at the institute with uh, Carl and Mike, Mike had already done all this uh, improvement offline, but um, sorry for that. Um, 
then we, we realized that distributing files, a problem, managing all those, everything was a complete disaster. Uh, we just couldn't be sure that, it's, that the students will actually m do what we want them to do. Of course, there is always a trade of you have to constrain them on what you want them to, uh, to answer, but there is also a trade off of what the actual time that you save. We said, okay, what's a standard in absolutely every platform, a web browser? Let's go into the web. And, but let's keep the cool features that we have in Mathematica to develop these interactive tools and still post them. Luckily, about the same time Mathematica 10.0 came out, we had these cloud objects, and um, that's, um, I'm really sorry about this. No, we had so many problems with the hotel connection that I was doing it offline. Okay, let's do it online. Okay. So, sorry about that. Let me just go back for a second and we said, okay, we keep the individualized questions. That's not big enough, I think, right? So, after several weeks of thinking, how are we going to individualize questions? If, we, if you have one parameter that it's dependent of some other in the question and then in the sub-question and then in the, in the answer, okay, that came a hell after two or three weeks. We realized, okay, we set the parameters here. Um, we give them uh, uh, names. Then we give the minimum value, the maximum value, and the steps on which they can be randomized. The number of accu the accuracy of decimal points. Nothing that is a, something from the other world. And now, let's say that you have apples. That says from 1 to 20, a random number. And then it says apple next to it. And just because we want to keep it correctly in English, we just add an S or not, depending if it's uh, one or more than one. Then the question says, I will give you 10 times new apples. Of course, this is a silly, silly example, but you can get the idea. Then these new apples would be randomized from two to five. How many do you have now? Then you actually calculate the answer. The answer, of course, it's the same for every question. You just have these parameters, and then when they are randomized, the question, the, uh, sorry, the answer is, of course, given. Then you just, for display purposes, you say the correct answer is blah, blah, blah. You could say actually, yeah, this is quite a straightforward, don't need to reply that, whatever you want there. So we made these uh, random questions, so parameter A from two to five. We have different kinds of answer types, radio button bar, slider, input field. Of course, all of every kind of question, every kind of, let's say, answer, either you want to give it as multiple choice or for a slider or an input field needs a lot of thought. And that's what we are uh, thinking at the moment. Some other old question. At the end, this in our pipeline, as I said, we had troubles with the internet connection. You parse it, it's get, it gets pushed. Mathematica retrieves from our database the number of students that there are. It randomizes every question according to the student and to the lecture. Uh, moreover, if you want to retrieve what every student got, it's still possible. We thought about like a week of how to do this possible, randomized, but it's still retrievable to check what, if a student got actually a very difficult question, if it was worth it, we'd think it won't be an issue, but just in case. The stud students need to have a, we need to have always a side on what the students are doing. So this is tested. Let me show you where it's, uh, actually deployed. So this is, our, uh, this is our online platform. As you can see, everything individualized, etc. Then we go here to the exams, and that's due today. Okay, we go and take the exam. You see here, the questions are deployed as cloud objects, embedded as iframes, lots of technical details, boring. The thing is that here, let's say that you have six apples, so that's 36. If I went to elementary school correctly, then we submit. This is saved in, a, in another cloud object, and then we retrieved. And with the functions that you saw, no, 
that you saw somewhere. Yeah, right. We compare with this one, and we actually grade with those. That means that on the website, the student will never be able to see the answer. Only we know that. Let's keep answer this one. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. And any guesses of how old I am? 20. 20? <laughs> I have a beard, you know? OK, let's say 20. That's it. So of course, this would take at least three minutes for a human to grade. Those are three minutes that we don't have. We have lots to do, believe me, lots to do. We just don't want to do that. But we have already solved that. So we go to the results. It's already solved. And um, here, here it is, a report. It's not as elegant as the one that Mike made uh, for last year. But we are getting to it, 67% because we got two out of three correct. First question, answer 36, expected answer, we retrieved that from a cloud object saved. And then the second question, uh, your answer expected 20 and 20. There's another part that should be here that I am, yeah, I didn't include because there are no other students. Is this comparison, the, the chart that, uh, that Mike had at the moment, it, I'm the only student taking this one, that's why it won't show. So this is how we expect, where's the presentation? This is how we expect to get things faster. Oops. Takeaways, as you saw, the, the iframes, they look good, but they could look better. How can we do that? We have tried the, the open possibilities of the, of the Wolfram programming cloud. I think that they are not enough. You saw that I had to scroll within the iframes. We don't want that. We just want the student to feel comfortable when doing an exam, not caring about was it submitted, was it not, etc. High potential for scaling. This worked for one student. It works for a thousand. No need to hire an army of assistants to grade. And opportunity to get more insights and user behavior. Do you know how much time each of your students takes in every question? You can probably make a guess. The most difficult question might take them 50% of the time during the exam. Do you actually get the statistics on that? No, but if the exam is online, you can check where the student spent all his time. Uh, moreover, we can give immediate feedback to the student like, Okay, you've been, you have spent 15 minutes in these questions, and all your classmates finished it in three. So you're doing something wrong. Repeat it, think it again. Finally, next steps. Um, of course, as I said, these insights for live grading and suggestions, of course, uh, we are also thinking that uh, the lecturer might have an iPad while supervising the exam and seeing, oh my God, this guy is too, doing terribly. Let's go and talk to him, live, right there, without needing to see one of uh, uh, every screen of the 150 students taking that exam. Uh, add more question formats and intelligent testing, as I suggested, we need to think. Every time that you want to randomize something, it's not just as easy as randomizing the parameters. You need to think, how can they answer, what, are the, what, the, what they will think, and how we can grade that, especially. Improve user interface performance and cloud object appearance. As I said, once that we could embed those cool graphics, those cool tools, those answers, and the, the student can just go through the website as if he were on Facebook. They have no need to worry that, oh my God, this is a, an e-exam. I don't know how to do those. They feel comfortable, they can focus on solving tests with the tools that we can provide them. 